time for Hostile Discourse. Here's your host, David Rolfing. Hey everyone, welcome back to Hostile Discourse. Tonight on episode 29, we'll be discussing the Winter Olympics, which are going on right now in Pyeongchang, South Korea. So Jacob is going to give his controversial stance on the Olympic Games in general, Summer and Winter Olympics. And it's actually a revisiting of our previous debate from a little over a year ago. So that will be fun. And then we'll be discussing the current medal standings for the Winter Olympics, as well as discussing our preference of summer versus Winter Olympics and kind of the pros and cons of each. And last but not least, we're going to debate what the worst sport in the Winter Olympics is right now and which sport we would choose to replace it with. So I know we have some fun ones picked out for that debate. But before we get started, let me remind you that I write down all the time codes in the show notes so you can just swipe down there and skip to the debate if you don't care about Jacob's stupid opinion on the Olympics. Hmm. Or you can listen to the whole thing. And first, I can introduce you to tonight's guests, starting with first-time guest Connor Brady from Houston, Texas. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? And back again, a regular guest, Chris Fisher from New York City. What's up, everybody? And two of my co-hosts are back tonight. Jared had more important things to do, I guess, starting with Jacob Hunter in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hey, everybody. And last but not least, Joe Kuiper from Oklahoma City. Hello, everyone. All right, let's start with the open season segment. So, Jacob, I can hand it off to you and you can tell us why you think the Olympics are bad for humanity. Sure. With the Winter Olympics, it's a very different tone, as I'm sure we've all picked up on just from watching and um, experiencing the coverage and everything. I I feel like with the summer, it's much easier to criticize uh, maybe the selection committee on choosing really poor places to have the Olympics, um, which leads to really poorly planned and rushed construction jobs of absolutely massive infrastructure. It's very dangerous for these places like Rio suffered several deaths of just uh, construction workers in building those stadiums. And with the, the Winter Olympics in Russia, you saw all sorts of terrible conditions of the village and the facilities. And basically, last time we went through this, I, if I remember correctly, is that I made the case that as they stand now, the Olympics, uh, they're not good. It's not the idea of an overall world congregation to to participate in world championship sports, but it's just the fact that they're just executed so poorly. And with the Winter Olympics, what what strikes me more now is, um, first of all, I don't know, th- this is probably the, the hot opinion. I, I get really uncomfortable when I watch skating or gymnastic events just because of the stories I've heard through the years about how terrible it is to grow up as a kid with the goal set to become a, an Olympic gold skater or gymnast. But it's just a terrible life you lead, riddled with brutal practice and abusive coaching. And that's a bit of an overarching statement. But I guess my bottom line is I've never seen the evidence that the accomplishment of winning a gold amounts to more than the struggles that it went into to put on that event. Not in the way that you see a city like Houston find great value in winning the World Series. Obviously, that is an amazing feat for that team, especially in the time that it happened. The people of Houston all benefited in a huge way from their team winning the World Series. But when someone wins a gold medal, I've never seen an instance where that had such a profound positive impact that it seemed to offset what is just a massive presentation for kind of iffy sports. So a big part of your argument there is how the country where the Olympics are being held, if they can't handle building the infrastructure, it's a terrible, has a terrible impact on their economy in the long run. Do you think that choosing a country for the Winter Olympics like South Korea is a good thing because they're a 
you know, their economy is very advanced. It doesn't seem like they had trouble designing the slopes needed for these Winter Olympics. Yeah. Or yeah that, do you think that Summer Olympics has a bigger impact because you have to create more stadiums definitely, and such? Definitely for that. And also because so many of the events take place on facilities that have to already have been built in ski mountains. I think that's way less of a factor. Also, just I feel like the Winter Olympics aren't as big of a deal. Um, I might be wrong about that. But I get the impression you just don't need as much as far as infrastructure for the Winter Olympics. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say those factors are are not so much in play. Uh, I'm intrigued by your argument because I, I kind of expected the infrastructure argument similar to what you brought up in the Summer Olympics. But I guess I'm surprised by the whole thinking that, like, training for this from a young age and not really having a net benefit in the long run as arguments against it. I'm, I would be curious to see of all those people who have won medals, like 10 years later, ask them, do you like regret it? Like, do you regret all the training you put into it? I just haven't seen anything to suggest that like they would be unhappy with the training they put into it. Um, but I, I mean, I agree. There's definitely instances where it goes too far. And one other thing I would say is that it kind of seems like the Olympics is the highest tier of competition and like even national competitions i feel like it pushes people to try harder at national competitions because they want to represent their country so i I don't know i guess in my mind the idea of a competition that makes people the best they can be is a good idea but maybe there are alternatives most of these competitions like in the olympics rifle shooting will have world championships same with same with track and field Right. Someone tell me if I'm wrong or or at least like there's always the opportunity for like setting a new world record that doesn't have to happen at the Olympics. So in in that sense, I buy into the ceremony of the Olympics to an extent. I love tradition, but I just don't know. It, it, It just brings up these these institutions like gymnastics and figure skating and these it brings into power like people like this Dr. Nassar. And that's just like a, a super terrible instance, but I feel like without the Olympics being what they were, kind of shaky and seemingly unstructured sports get a lot of money and power and influence. And I think that's bad in the long run. If you're talking about soccer, that is a really organized sport that is well monitored for the most part. People pay a lot of attention to it, at least. And then it gets to be on the global stage. With these smaller sports, they are never seen anywhere but the Olympics. And it just becomes too much to handle, I feel like. Again, that's just a lot of speculation, but it it is a really profound vibe I get from those kinds of events. If the Olympics didn't exist, though, like the smaller sports, like you mentioned, gymnastics, etc., they wouldn't have any stage to compete at that top level. And nobody, even less people would participate in them, too, because... They don't have the Olympics. If, you know, if gymnasts didn't have the Olympic stage to reach for, they would suck for them. And a lot of other of the smaller sports, they well, don't have that stage. Maybe. First of all, I, I just said it, in this, the Olympics as they exist now. So I guess a lot of this criticism has turned into like, we should just be focusing on these other sports too in the three years in between, four years in between. But I don't think the Olympics as an idea are bad. It's just, it's just the way they are right now. But even so, there are plenty of sports that are not in the Olympics that are doing just fine. So I don't think that's a big deal. And and the athlete stories are still going to be told and lived out and have an impact on people that observe them, even if there aren't the Olympics. I don't buy the the idea that the Olympics are absolutely needed because if if people watch them, people are going to watch them outside of the Olympics. I I just don't buy that. I I would kind of go along with David's point that it kind of, it gives the lesser known sports an avenue to strive for and more importantly like i feel like the olympics worldwide is one of the most like watched events over you know not maybe not the super bowl or the world cup or whatever but there's so many people that will watch it and especially like kids that it gives i don't know i feel like it it gives kids a chance to really aspire to something rather than just david mentioned gymnastics like kids want to go to ou for gymnastics oh you sex joe um, hmm. Kids want to go to OU for gymnastics, but past college, then they don't really have anything to look forward to. If, but the Olympics, they watch it at, and it kind of gives us some additional aspirations. I will also say, so I agree with the infrastructure. It's obviously, like we've seen it over and over again with Sochi and uh, Rio, just things falling apart, even like two years after the Olympics are over. But I think 
for, because you kind of said, I don't know if David phrased it like this or you did, Jacob, that you said it's like bad for kind of overall humanity or just overall there's more bad than good. I feel like the Olympics are especially important for countries that maybe are going through like some civil unrest or whatever. Something's going on in the country. It is, I feel like it's a good social way to get everybody like reorganized and kind of show a little bit of patriotic spirit, whether it's the U.S. or some other country. So I, I would say there's a lot of net benefits from just people being able to watch their own country go compete and bring people together regardless of what bad things may be happening in their country. I love how you have figure skating on the TV behind you. It's really funny. <laughs> I got distracted by what I can only assume is Lindsey Vaughn on the TV <laughs> on that commercial. I think aspiring athletes being able to see what they can become is great, but that's a really small part of the people that are watching. And the Olympics are just so temporary, but the the negative effects last for so long on a country that's not prepared. So I, I really think it gets outweighed after a while. So there's negative effects on that one country, but think about all the other, I don't know how many countries are in the Olympics, all those other countries that get net gains from getting to go cheer on their countrymen and whatever sport they're doing. So I just feel like, like maybe, yeah, that one city, Rio, Sochi, wherever, might get some lasting negative effects, but I feel like overall it might be a net gain. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the movie Miracle is yeah. about the Winter Olympics. And therefore, if we didn't have the Winter Olympics, we would not have one of the greatest sports movies okay, of all time. I, I, how, <laughs> I don't know if I have to say it again, but I, I'm not advocating for the uh, the abolition of the Olympics. Jacob, do you realize you're arguing in favor of communism right now? <laughs> 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 oh, I, I see the error in my ways now. I agree yeah. with you. I, I think there are a lot of things that have come up, I think, with just technology and modern media that show that, uh, there's a lot of perversity that go into the Olympics of kind of a bunch of rich countries playing these games and at the expense of these poor countries. There's also a lot of corruption in the, uh, the IOC um, or in FIFA, if we're talking World Cup, it's all kind of the same thing. The only place yeah. where I disagree with you is the kind of pressure of the Olympics causing these uh, abusive coaches or doctors and, and horrible life schedules. I, I think you can find that those awful but anomalous situations in just about every sport. You had the Penn State situation in football. I don't think that was caused by the pressure of getting to the NFL or playing in the Super Bowl. I think that's more just kind of like a, a recency kind of jaded look, albeit understandable, with kind of the, the horrible uh, Michigan State stuff and, and you know, all of the other things that have come out. But I'll, I'll draw a distinction in that Olympics and figure skating are... How am I going to say this? They have the greatest disparity of power between the coach and the athlete. I think that's a particularly dangerous place for a young athlete. Whereas with like your Baylor situation, the victims weren't the athletes, not to not to diminish that struggle. But I just meant to address the fact that the Olympics have the most prominent examples of of sports where the athletes themselves could be victimized. And that's, that's, that's just like a really close encounter for many, many years between a student and a teacher um, under really high pressure. I just find that to be pretty volatile. Yeah. I mean, I think that that could apply to sports in general and not just Olympic sports. Definitely interesting to talk about. And I think we should probably it's move on to... Yeah, that made me sad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so deep. Well, I'll move on to the our discussion and we can kind of talk about the Olympics right now in Pyeongchang and the medals that each country has won. So right now, Germany has the most gold medals with five. Netherlands has four. The US has four. And total medals, Netherlands and Canada have 10. Norway has the most with 11. Um, and this was updated as of Tuesday the 13th at about 9 p.m. So the the U.S. four golds includes who's a snowboarder who just won a few minutes ago? Sean White. White. Yes, that medal is in that list. A couple quick facts about these Winter Olympic Games. This is the 23rd Winter Games. There's been 28 Summer Games. This Winter Olympics features 102 events and 15 sports. 
And the new sports this year were big air snowboarding, mass start speed skating, mixed doubles curling, and mixed team alpine skiing. And a few nations, it was their first time competing as well. Ecuador, Eritrea, haven't even heard of them. What? Kosovo, Malaysia, Nigeria, and Singapore. Those are some obscure countries. So is Eritrea yeah. even a country? Eritrea? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, I'm a I'm a med school student. Eastern <laughs> Europe, European. I was watching uh, mixed doubles curling yesterday. They had it on in the computer lab. Oh, and uh, first of all, it had North that Eastern Africa. It had that Russian, oh well, Olympic athletes from Russia lady, the one that looks like Wonder Woman. But that mixed doubles was going on, and I really pondered uh, the thought that maybe curling is the best sport for both sexes to play like the 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 difference between man and woman in curling is so marginal that they can make like a really balanced team more so than any sport and so for that i think it's really cool to watch plus i just think it's i feel like people are always like they watch curling ironically <laughs> I know you what you're mean? Saying. like it's like oh hey it's it's curling let's give this a shot but i I, I think it's a really cool sport. What are you talking about? Uh, You're watching it ironically, too. You just think that one girl's hot. No. <laughs> I, I am just now adding to the fact that I'm watching it for pleasure of, of observing a genuine competition. Observing a the, genuinely uh, beautiful woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman was a bonus. It's a unique thing to observe because none of us have ever done curling, I assume. Am I right? I've sort of done it. What? <laughs> ah. <laughs> you slid something else down a nice thing. And well, there was yeah. like, I, you guys know I grew up playing hockey and sometimes they'd ha- come on and do like curling practice after and I'd try to let them like get me play around and <laughs> that's bad. The extent of my experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Jacob, that is a good point how the... The disparity between skill between male and female is very small. That is kind of interesting because if you watch like male versus female half pipe snowboarding, it's insane. The level of tricks the guys are doing compared to the women, it's so much higher. It's It was crazy. I didn't know that a female snowboarder like doing two 1080s was like a first you know, right. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Chloe Kim won her gold on two back-to-back 1080s, and then a gold medal for you know Sean White is two back-to-back 1440s, followed by two back-to-back 1280s with like <laughs> ten times higher. It's crazy. Man, it's like the first double 1080 for a man in like the 80s or something. Like <laughs> happened like 30 years ago. I don't think was snowboarding even around in the 80s. <sighs> I watched a a hilarious video the other day of like a news story when snowboarding snowboarding was just becoming a thing and it was like interviewing all these really jaded skiers <laughs> talking about like <laughs> finding him <laughs> and kicking him off the mountain and yeah. how they're like such they're so rambunctious and they're no good for the mountain. The snowboarding's pretty new still. It's crazy how quickly the athleticism and the, the level of difficulty has developed. And, and snowboarding and, and skateboarding are kind of very closely correlated in, in how the difficulty of tricks progress. But it wasn't like, it wasn't that long ago. And I remember it when I was a kid that Tony Hawk made groundbreaking X Games or sports news because he landed the first 900 in competition. That's a joke now, but that was yeah. like the that was only 10 or 15 years ago. And now like if you think snowboarding is crazy like skiers in in the pipe and slope style can get even more rotation than snowboarders can. They they're down like 1860s and shit like that. I it's I don't know how the judges keep count. I Do they yeah, get like that... replay? I guess you have an eye for it, but I don't know how they go. see like they they rattle off the tricks like right after they land them and before they do the next one. I don't know how they keep track of. Yeah. And then they're also throwing in, like, whatever, the cab, double cork, whatever. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know how they see it so quick. Maybe the commentators are using, like, a live delay of a few seconds, you know, in order to sound I more think, immediate. I don't know. I think they've got a trained eye for it. It's just so it's so hard to follow from someone who only watches, you know, every now and then. I, I suspect thought- that they have – you go ahead, Joe. Well, I was just saying, I always thought that they submitted, like, I'm going to do these tricks. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's how I always thought it worked, but I could be wrong. Yeah, no, I think you're definitely right. Genius. 
makes me wonder like snowboarding has become so big so fast and it's still so new it kind of makes it makes me wonder about like the place of a sport in the olympics which will lead into our debate i guess but like i wonder what it was like when they first added it it must have been really controversial for some people right if even now we can say that snowboarding is relatively new to add it to like the oldest sporting competition series ever must have been a big deal Oh, well, maybe it's just... <laughs> yeah, a, I just, I don't know when that. it was introduced yeah. to the Olympics. Chris, I think you'd be the closest one to speak to that. Oh, I don't know. I, d- like, I think pretty much any, it seems like every Olympics, they remove one or two sports and they add one or two sports and it's usually pretty obscure, but like those who are involved, there always seems to be a decent level of contention regardless of the sport. 1998, this is the 20 year anniversary of snowboarding. Hey, in, wow. Uh, in, Nagano, Japan. Huh. Um, I did want to ask you guys if you prefer watching summer or winter Olympics and holy shit. If you have a preference, why? B is farting so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like uh, it's yes. so awful. Uh I can go first. I I think I prefer the winter Olympics, to be honest. I just love like I've always been a person who loves snow though, so maybe that plays into it, but like I love the snowy gear, snowy outfits, the pristine yes. white. So I always in the mountains. I, I, it's way better scenery to me. Maybe that's why I like it. But like the the Summer Olympics sometimes just seems like, all right, I'm going to watch a swimming event and now I'm going to watch a running event and then back to swimming and then back to running. And like, I feel like those are kind of the only ones I really end up watching. So I don't know. I love the bobsled. I, I'll follow that up. I think I'm kind of the same way as Joe. Like I grew up snowboarding and always like going go to the mountains and stuff. So I definitely like the, the scenery and stuff more, but I will say, I think summer Olympics has its place as well, just because it's the kind of original idea of Greek Olympic sports. I think that's maybe the saving grace for me of watching the summer Olympics is since the tradition goes back so far, that's kind of a cool part for me. But the tradition started with them competing in the nude. So we've broken <laughs> away from that tradition a bit. Bring it back. <laughs> So I, I'm torn. I, I kind of feel the same way. Joe, you were kind of talking about it. It, my heart wants to say the Winter Olympics because they just come across as so magical. And like, especially if snow's falling or you kind of think of like the, uh, in and out scene shots of Miracle where there's, uh, like the snowy Olympic villages and it's just so pretty. But I just sit down and watch the Winter Olympics and I have a good time. But like, I feel like more than half the sports I sit down and I just get kind of bored because I get lost and I just think there's a lot of sports that are hard to relate to in the winter Olympics and the summer Olympics it's a lot it's probably a little more uh I don't know I guess less unique sports across the board fewer unique sports but I think just relatability as a viewer makes it more entertaining and being able to know what it looks like to run faster than someone or like throw something farther or swim faster. Um, plus there's just more common sports like volleyball and basketball and whatnot. It just makes it, I don't know. I, I, I like them both a lot. I think hockey is the best Olympic sport all around. I'll say that. Yeah. I'll especially se- uh, second Joe's sentiment about the gear. I I always look forward to the like the opening ceremony outfits, like the Ralph Lauren stuff. I don't, I don't think this is lame at all. And this year, did y'all see the gloves they were wearing? Yes. Uh, they were so cool. They were like uh, um, the gloves and Dumb and Dumber, the little tassels hanging they, off. They are, they are like that. Yeah, I think the winter clothes look so cool. And, and I think Chris is right in hockey being the best Olympic sport. But volleyball is also amazing. And I think Chris really nailed it, just like about being able to relate to the sports with these, with a lot of these winter ones, like you can't understand how the scoring works and no one ever really explains it to you. But if you're watching volleyball, you know, when someone scores, same with hockey. And it's like, if you're watching luge and someone sets a world record and then you watch someone else that comes up and looks like they did the exact same thing and they get like eighth place. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I would say too, like the winter Olympics for is definitely the more subjective of the two. Half of the events are like, graded by a judge like figure skating snowboarding skiing everything's like oh a judge versus the summer olympics is like timed you know did you listen to that or read the npr article that tk sent in the group chat today i did not they listed the things that people are judged on in figure skating and and i want to read them because they blew my mind and really 
<laughs> I thought there was way more integrity in this sport than there actually is. I'm just going to list a few. This is from, to cite my sources, this is an interview on All Things Considered. They said, physical, emotional, and intellectual involvement, carriage, <laughs> style and individual personality, clarity of movement, variety and contrast, and lastly, projection, which as the skating federation is defined by radiating energy resulting in an invisible <laughs> let me repeat that resulting in an invisible connection with the audience <laughs> what the heck? that 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 is what you were judged on in figure skating have you guys seen uh, i tanya wow no she she always got so pissed because she was just far and away the best skater and could do the most uh, athletic and impressive moves, but they would always knock her because she looked like trailer trash pretty much. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to change my answer for the debate of which sport <laughs> I want to remove. <laughs> On the fly, do it. It'll be the first time ever. No, I'm not actually going to do that because I have to have preparation, but I think we should start the debate. So let's get into it. The debate question is, what is the worst sport in this year's Winter Olympics, and what is the best replacement sport for it? Joe will be the judge, and the rest of us will be arguing for our individual answers. So, Joe, I can hand it off to you from here, and you can dictate the order of things. Okay. Yeah, so this obviously is sort of a two-parter, so it makes it a little more challenging, but I will try my best to judge both equally so that, you know, if you... Maybe lack in one, but make up for it with the replacement. I will grant that more. And again, it's based on the arguments. So let's get down to it. Let's do opening statements. Uh, I'll go left to right on my screen. So first person is actually Chris. So I'm going to remove bobsled for reasons I will address later. I don't know. Is it bobsled or bobslay? Slay. Bobslay. I'm going to remove bobslay uh, for reasons I will address later. And played around with a few ideas of uh, something new or something that's been proven and tested and something a little ridiculous. I propose for addition to the 2026 Winter Olympic Games professional or semi-professional pond skimming as okay. featured in spring break in many skiing mountains. <laughs> uh, all right when we get back to you you're gonna have to elaborate because i don't really know what that is uh, well, i but... have to condense two things into 30 seconds i don't know that's, that's, yeah i know <laughs> i'm just saying like as featured on many uh, jerry of the day instagram <laughs> posts yes uh all right next up connor all right so i chose mine just based on kind of popularity of viewing for what to what's worst and what should be removed so nordic combined which that's, I guess that's just the name of it, is basically two other Olympic sports combined into one. So it's big air, like big air ski jump and cross country skiing. I think the two of them separately are enough. Like they're, they're both really interesting sports, but they're enough at, on their own and you don't need to combine them. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool to see an athlete do both of them and excel at both of them. But then also secondly, it's only a men's event as of right now. Mm. So I think, Getting a, Despicable. Getting a, <laughs> we're in 2018, getting a sport that uh, both men and women can share in, probably preferable. To replace Nordic Combined, I also, with Chris, tried to think of some kind of time-tested, also accessible to both genders, which it's really not part of my argument, but I guess it kind of plays into it, um, is backcountry skiing. And I, as Chris, I will also define that later. All right. Uh, now we move to Jacob. I move to remove the biathlon. I took a similar approach to what Brady or Connor did, and the fact that I think this is just a senseless combination of two sports. But this is even a wider gap between cross country and ski jumping. This is cross country skiing and rifle shooting. Um, it's just a real hodgepodge, and the athletes would be better served if they did one, the other, or both, um, if they're really that good. And I moved to add an event that was, it was in the 1924 Olympics um, and maybe the 1920 Olympics as well called Alpinism. And it's actually not an event in the Olympics. It's, um, it's, goal, it's medals awarded to people based on 
feats of Arctic mountaineering that happened in the year before. So there's there's no event during the actual Olympics, but I think that they are rewarding some of the greatest feats of physical human accomplishment, which is the whole idea behind sports and the people that pull off the stuff that these people did to get these gold medals need way more recognition. All right. Uh, And then we go to David. Yep. So I would get rid of skeleton. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Based on the name alone. Uh, And the picture. I I was just looking at that. It's the scariest little stick figure icon of all of the sports. (laughs) No, not based on the name alone, but um, I, I can get into why it's so stupid and repetitive considering some of the other sports in these Olympic Games. And I would replace it with Igloo, more specifically Igloo building. <laughs> this would be very entertaining, trust me. And I can, <laughs> I can explain my, my ideas on how to make this a competition and why it would be so fun in my next statements. Now we'll move on to some arguments. I was thinking that maybe the best way to do this would be to have first we'll deal with each of you kind of saying why either yours doesn't belong or someone else's does belong. So targeting the first half, if you will. And then later we can move to arguing why the one that you're trying to replace it isn't good or why yours is good. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think I should clarify what skeleton is just in case people don't know. It's basically luge. Only the person is laying on their belly instead of on their back. Okay. And head first, not feet first. Uh, Chris, could you, <laughs> could you explain pond skimming? Yes. As pond well? skimming, sure. There's not really a fixed format. That's part of the beauty of the quote-unquote sport because the uh, general idea is a pond at the bottom of a hill and people on skis and snowboarders now – Uh, And spring break, they usually wear like some sort of ridiculous costume or no clothes at all. But they go down as fast as they can and try to skim as far across the water as possible. I see a few different branches of of opportunity to kind of mix up the sport. Maybe you could do some sort of aerial maneuver or trick and land on the water. But yeah, mostly it's either it's basically going off a jump onto water and going as far as you can. Um, There's always crazy wipeouts and some people make it far all right um then we'll open the floor and yeah again kind of for now we'll focus on why the events that you guys picked why you think the other events should be in it and why you think yours shouldn't so i'll, I'll start it off i'll address jacob's pick first uh was it biathlon right yeah um, so i think kind of going back to the tradition of the olympics i think biathlon should be in the olympics because it goes to sort of competing in a real life scenario where people, you know, out living in Russia or Norway or Alaska, you know, Northern or Southern countries, they're going around cross country skiing to go out and find food. And then once they find it, they have to shoot it and, you know, be really precise. So it's a good mix of being really well conditioned, but then at the same time having the ability to calm your breath down and make a shot. So I think the, the, premise of it kind of goes back to a cool history so that i would i would keep it for those reasons yeah geez jacob have you ever seen a james bond movie god (laughs) (laughs) seriously yeah i'd love to piggyback on you there connor so in james bond for your eyes only bond (laughs) joins a biathlon match and wins spur of the moment and it's one of the coolest scenes in a bond movie it's also one of the coolest sports in the summer or winter olympics we talked about this on a year ago on the last olympics episode how we all thought it biathlon was so cool i mean i totally agree with connor it's like very useful for actually hunting hunting purposes in russia and it's just really cool and also entertaining and impressive to to shoot something after you're cross-country skiing your heart out it would be super hard to calm down your heart rate and get that shot off i think it's really cool and way cooler than all these other sports we chose to remove yeah um Uh, if i said biathlon was the coolest sport back then i've changed my mind so hard since then chris were you gonna were you gonna tack on before i unleashed on you guys (laughs) uh no go ahead okay um history is not a good reason for 
a sport to be in the Olympics because they're already so they're so far removed from their historic place. You're running on a track. You're not running on you're not running in a field to to escape from a, a field of bison or whatever Aboriginal people were originally running for. And, and you're not skiing through an actual cross country terrain and actually shooting animals. It's so far m- removed from that. Um, the history alone, it, it's, it's just a sentiment a- and it doesn't speak at all to what, what a sport should actually be about. It should be about exhibiting, um, something really special in a skill. And the problem is like, look, stand alone. What they do is crazy. And mainly for the cross country skiing part. But if we already have events for cross country skiing and we already have events for rifle shooting, I think it's way better for the Olympics that we free up a spot. This is really what this is about. We need to free up a spot because there there is a really important event that needs to be in there, but we're not letting in there because there's a half and half hodgepodge combination of two events that already are in the Olympics taking that slot. We can watch actually the best exhibition of cross country skiing and actually the best exhibition of rifle shooting and let that be it and really acknowledge what uh, so, some winter athletes that need the attention. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to quickly address mine because I feel like it's strong enough that we I'm not going to have to address anyone else's. Bob said is a fucking joke. <laughs> like it's a joke of a sport. It like luge and skeleton are already glorified sledding, which is cool, and it takes like some coordination and core strength and whatever. There are literally going to be gold medalist Olympians who all they did was run for three seconds and sit in a sled. Like they don't even drive, they don't even <laughs> sit in the back and control the tail. There are two people two people that will be Olympic gold medalists that just run for three seconds and slit sit in a car. (laughs) And that's all they do. Don't they have the strings, the person in the back, don't they have little steering strings? Oh, okay. So maybe they touch some strings. I I don't even know. (laughs) Like that's, that's a fucking joke. They they have Chris, haven't you played Mario party Two? the bobsleigh mini game is actually kind of difficult. I'm sure I'm sure it's difficult for the person driving who's the guy in the front, but like that's one fourth of the team and there are just two guys, really three guys that just sit there. Like maybe they have to shift their body weight. I do that like when I'm trying to get comfortable watching TV. It's just it's a it's a joke. Um there is a, there is one downside to taking it out and that it's the Jamaican bobsled team would have never existed and people like Drake Norman would not be able to achieve the level of happiness that he has achieved in his life. Other than that, it's like any athleticism is displayed tenfold in the same sport for, for luge and skeleton. But like, Bob was a joke. It's got like, if, if there's a sport to go, that's what should go. So I, I'll address that just by saying, I think if, if we're going to take that argument about bobsled being kind of ridiculous, as far as granting medals to people that don't deserve them, at the same token, David's argument about skeleton, that one guy, I guess he is in control of his own sled, but he's also kind of running and sitting on a sled, and hopefully he makes the right turns. I don't know. I think that's kind of tough to split the two. I think bobsled is a little cooler because it's a bit of more teamwork. They have to all get in the sled or sleigh, whatever, at the same time. They have to um, really coordinate their sitting. Sure. <laughs> Whereas the other guy just has to land on his cart. I will say, I'll go back to my option of the Nordic combo. It's different than the biathlon because it's combining two two different sports, which, yes, they're both in the Olympics, one summer and one winter, but it's combining them into two sports, which I think almost makes it a different sport because when you're shooting in the Olympics by itself, you're, you know, your heart isn't racing. You're, you probably are as calm and as still as you'll ever be. And when you're cross-country skiing, skiing in the Winter Olympics, you know, you just go all out and you don't have to worry about calming down later. So I think that's it's a different sport almost than just combining two sports. Whereas big air and cross country is literally like two sports. They do them at two separate times and then combine the sports. So I think that's the Nordic combination is literally two sports put together that people already do. I agree. Connor mentioned bobsleigh being slightly cooler than luge or skeleton, which I think is true. And skeleton, the reason I picked that as worse than 
um, Luge is because Luge is slightly faster than Skeleton. They lay on their backs and they can move a little bit faster. Their slay, slay, whatever, sled is a little bit lighter, so they're faster. Skeleton is just the belly downhill facing version of Luge and it's super lame. The only thing that makes it exciting is the possibility of somebody totally wiping out, you know, so nothing worth it there. I'm going to get into the igloo building sport a little bit. So all of us love the Primitive Technology YouTube channel. We love seeing people (laughs) build, as we've mentioned on recent episodes, we love seeing people build shelters that can shield them from the elements because it's hard to do that. And very few people have the skills to create shelters like this. And it's even more impressive for the Winter Olympics because Eskimos have to create igloos and sub-freezing temperatures in order to stay out of the elements. And I think that igloo building would just be so entertaining. There'd be a time period and they'd have the freedom to be creative and once again this would be kind of subjective judging much like a lot of the other winter sports but I think building a efficient and creative igloo would be an awesome competition to watch and just imagine the the entertaining commentary on igloo building like experts and it would be so fun to watch some igloo builders from across the world. Okay. And good luck to like the African countries <laughs> practicing building igloos. <laughs> okay. Speaking of ill-equipped countries, I was re- I was just now reading through a Wikipedia article. Can I share a crazy anecdote about the Jamaican bobsleigh team? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, here it is. Having qualified for the 2014 Sochi Olympics, but lacking funding, first of all, that's crazy, the cryptocurrency Dogecoin community raised on the team's behalf 30000 of the approximately 40000 required within two days. Some randos on the internet who made a cryptocurrency uh-huh. after a meme sent the Jamaican bobsleigh <laughs> team to the 2014 Olympics. That's awesome. That's impressive. Yeah. So, Chris, why do you think that pond skimming would be a good Olympic sport? How would they even judge it? Is it based on distance? Yeah, sure. All right. If we're being realistic in this debate, there's, there's only two actual sport <laughs> proposals here. Jacob's proposing not having a sport in the Olympics. That's not true. That's and not true. David is proposing true. like an arts and crafts competition. <laughs> Like it's really me and me and Connor and mine is kind of ridiculous. I get it. I tried to take like a slightly comedic angle, but you could legitimately make a sport out of this that is on par of levels of respectability as other sports. And I would say above par on sports like bobsled where you just sit in a, in a cart, like you, you just go down and you skim across the water as far as you can. It's like, it's like ski jumping, but on water, or if you wanted to like, do a, a judge based thing then you can like throw some tricks down and you have to land on the water i think connor's co- sport would be cool too i think the only thing that makes mine a better proposal is it's just a lot easier to install um, you can set up big grandstands around it it would be super easy to film and watch um, i just not that it, it w- would be impossible to do but it'd be a lot harder to to transport people to a safe area to watch backcountry skiing it'd be harder to get the kind of optics for for the video and whatnot pond skimming very simple implementation lots of fun for the viewers plenty of variety of competition oh it's it would perfect have, it would have some amazing slow motion shots um go into commercial breaks yeah and the wipeouts are hilarious if you've ever seen them chris side <laughs> tangent have you ever been a part of your of pond skimming during your spring break days? No, I've only watched. I could picture you doing that, but I'm kind of bummed you had not Is pond skimming dangerous at all? No. Like, you could hit the, I mean, you you can can hit the side of the pond. Yeah, I mean, you can like, hurt yourself a little bit, but like, <laughs> people have died doing skeleton, and I don't think you're going to die pond skimming unless like someone can't swim. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, clarify, I guess, on mine. I think most people know backcountry skiing is just skiing off of you know, you're not on a resort, you're out in the middle of the woods skiing unchartered territory. When I thought of it, my initial idea was to almost do a two-pronged, not a two-pronged event, but typical backcountry skiing. You obviously don't have a lift or, or if you have the resources, you have a helicopter or a snowmobile. But my idea was to have it two-pronged to where the people kind of hike up because that's like the typical backcountry thing. So you 
<laughs> they're called skins, but you basically put a sticky mat under your skis or snowboard. You hike up to the top of the mountain and then you ski down. So that was my idea is to do kind of a dual format. Like you have to have the conditioning to get up the mountain, but then at the same time you have to be good and like have the style to get down and get points, which is kind of intense. Like Chris said, like it'd be hard to set up and a lot of things would go into it. But I just think it's, it's such a unique thing to see someone do is, you know, they're not on a man-made jump or anything. So I, I think it, it would really show an athlete's skill by seeing that they're very well conditioned, but then they can also do, you know, a backflip off the tree or whatever they're going to find in whatever backcountry format. So I think it'd, it'd be a cool sport to add. Bonus points if you outrun an avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> avalanche would probably be a, a curtailed aspect of it. I'm sure they'd blast down the avalanches first. Yeah, last person to run has an advantage considering they don't have to worry about an avalanche if five people went in the same area before them. Oh, that's not always true. Ooh. I'll show you a video. There's a funny video that they used to show in avalanche training where like four guys go down doing these cool turns and then this last guy goes and it just turns into an avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> it was a small one. It wasn't fatal or anything. I'm not that like insensitive. All right, anyone else have uh, any jabs they'd like to make? Uh, I will also go back. To, I'll, I'll go back to David's igloo craftsmanship building. A, I, I think it the Olympics is is awesome because it brings together a lot of different countries. And like I think David himself pointed out, like good luck to Africa or really any country that's not yeah. the frigid north or the frigid south. Like I mean, you can make the same like argument fruit. about any winter sport, like skiing. So well, sure, but skiing is way more easily accessible than building an igloo like you can go you can go to you know if you live in kansas you can go to colorado or if you live in italy well i guess there's mountains in italy if you live in spain you can go to this is a huge strength for pond skimming there's ponds in every country (laughs) (laughs) yeah i just doing igloo building it'd be like germany norway and u.s every canada Canada, sure, Russia, but it'd be like five countries that win every single time, and everybody else would think it's ridiculous. I think you're overestimating a little bit the effort it would take to create some fake snow to mold into cubes and make an igloo. Like It would take less snow to make a couple igloos in an indoor temperature regulated facility than it would to create fake snow to make a you know a ski slope. So, I don't think it would be that big of a hurdle for countries even in warmer climates and i think that the the entertainment value and just like the the uniqueness factor is what would make it so cool and i think people would actually watch curling is fun to watch because it's different we'd never get to see sports like that on a daily basis and igloo would be something similar yeah i i'm almost sold on the idea but i think that would be some of the worst set of rules as far as judging an igloo. <laughs> My first idea was to uh, you set a candle inside every igloo and whichever <laughs> candle <laughs> stays lit the longest, um, that they get the gold medal. But um, I think you can't, you can't have a good sport and still maintain the creativity aspect that you originally campaigned on, David, because if you're talking about building something, I can't even think of an equivalent, but... You just kind of have to put so many restrictions on size, dimensions. The only way I can see it working as a good sport, as a true sport, is where a lot of people are building a lot of the same igloo over and over again. Um, But maybe I'm not creative. I think I am, though. So... (laughs) (laughs) Why don't each of you actually kind of give me like a 30-second rundown on how your, your event would be judged? Because I think all of you kind of provided a new sort of thing that there's not really criteria for. So, Chris, why don't you start? Sure. Pond skimming distance. Who can go down the mountain and skim the furthest? That's how you win. Measured with lasers and the uh, the greatest technology known to mankind. And then there's pond skimming extreme. This will consist of a panel of five judges where <laughs> it will be a combination of the best trick thrown and the landing and the style. That's it. All right. Connor? So, like I said, backcountry skiing, in my mind, would be a two-pronged sport. So the skin, skinning up, if you will, and the 
backcountry skiing actually down the mountain. So 50% of the points awarded would be from the time it takes you to get up the mountain, and then the other 50% kind of similar to other skiing and snowboard events to where you know you do backflips and see how cool you can make it to get down the side of the hill. Jacob? When alpinism was originally in the Olympics, there was something called the International Climbing and Mountaineering Federation that had a private committee that would decide on these matters. To my research, there was never really a close competition. So this this is a bit more of a ceremonial sport, or at least a ceremonial medal, because mountaineers never really compete against each other. But... It would, I mean, you really could just factor in, you just build a model, right, of the amount of distance they climbed and the conditions that it happened in and the the handicaps they received in guides or whatever and um, factor it all into a score. It wouldn't be that hard at all. How riveting. Oh, I know. An igloo is created to keep people out of the elements, to keep heat in and to keep the cold out. So I think that using some environmental measurement tools you can measure the heat of inside the igloo over a certain period of time to make sure the heat stays in there so that's kind of like the more scientific measurement of the igloo structure and then i think as well the aesthetic of the igloo and the creativity and design could definitely be a factor as well and i mean obviously in many of these winter sports figure skating mostly but snowboarding and everything else like it's subjective judging in a lot of the these cases and so i think that some subjective judging on the aesthetic and beauty and things like that could be um, a big factor in judging also all right uh now why don't you each go down and we'll do the final statement so we can wrap this up um, so we'll go in inverse order of how we originally did it. So final statements, try and keep them you know, under a minute. Uh, we'll start with David. Yep. So getting rid of skeleton, luge is better. Bob sleigh is even better. It's just pointless. And I think making a room for a newer sport like Igloo would be the best move. Igloo, like I just stated, I think would be really entertaining for a lot of different people. I mean... It would be easy to understand as well. Kind of like curling is pretty simple to watch. Igloo would be simple, especially if the criteria were defined as far as far as the environmental factors. And yeah, I just think it'd be really fun sport and I would definitely watch it. All right, Jacob. Right. So look, the point of sports is to get people to do incredible new feats uh, of exertion with their bodies. And there's really no greater example than mountaineering. The greatest accomplishments of the human body have been climbing. The fact that we have some really sorry events in the Winter Olympics is uh, something that we can so easily change by removing the worst sport. And and that's the biathlon, a senseless combination of two sports, as I've already explained. It might have had some touching resemblance to kind of an archaic hunting form but that's so far removed now you 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 just have to look at it as an actual sport and and then realize that there's we're better off having the the skiers focus on skiing and the shooters focus on shooting and if they can meet in the middle then they should probably be doing both events what we need is a global stage where we can recognize some of the greatest athletes in the world and those are the ones that are climbing the highest peaks and braving the elements in ways that no one else in the olympics in the winter olympics is doing and i think it really is even the truest sense of the winter olympics and yet alpinism does not have the slot on the on the sport roster so i vote for that little exchange based on the fact that yes really the spirit of the winter olympics um can truly be fulfilled okay connor all right, so uh, Nordic combination, it is, I think it should be removed. It's two separate, completely separate sports that are both in the Winter Olympics. So you get it, you know, if you're really a big fan of big air skiing or cross country, it's not like it's going away. You still get to see it in the same three week span of the Olympics. So I think it is, it's such an easy one to get rid of without upsetting anybody that really likes those two sports, but also adding uh, value, whichever, you know, however they, IOC or the hostile discourse panel seems fit. <laughs> um, That's right. And then to add the backcountry skiing, um, I think 
the, like a lot of winter Olympic sports, like we discussed, are about seeing sports that you don't typically see day to day, curling, luge, whatever it is. Whereas summer summer Olympics is more a little more common. But backcountry skiing is very unique. It's crazy to see people creating the opportunity to do a backflip or a double backflip or whatever off of a tree or a rock or whatever, rather than a man-made half pipe that they know exactly when they're going to land and how it's going to feel to take off. And then at the same token, the skinning up would kind of go back to how the sport was originally before we had ski lifts and helicopters and whatever else. Um, So I think it'd be a true testament to athletic ability um, for a winter athlete. All right, and Chris? Yes, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would remove bobsled because I think it's a fucking joke that (laughs) people can just sit down in the car and get an Olympic medal. And there's also already four variations of going down a track in some sort of sled. Like, we can lose one of them. Um, I would add pond skimming because as far as an Olympic sport to add, it's unique, yet it is objectively a competition in multiple varieties. Um, it would be great TV. It would be very watchable. It would be um, fresh, and it would be easy to set up the course. All right. Well, thank you for uh, all your wonderful arguments. You're so welcome, Joe. <laughs> Shout out to the people in the YouTube chat right now. I'll give you a second to think about who gave the best debate, Joe. Paige and Kyle and William. Thanks for viewing in the on the live chat and for participating. I'll read some of your funny comments after Joe makes his decision. I don't want to sway any of his <laughs> any of his thoughts. I mean, I I've had that up, so I kind of read them already. But uh, oh, okay. I, I actually do think I know the winners, and I think I always have known. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it did vary quite a bit as you guys went through, and what I originally thought was not what I now think. Uh, fourth place, and it, it always sucks to give this, and I know you probably won't agree, but I'm going to have to give it to David. Ooh. Um, I just, the, the idea of the igloo building, I wasn't sold on as, as an Olympic sport, and I think that people brought up some good reasons why. Some funny, like, arts and crafts and other more serious you're just trying to overcompensate because that was originally your idea, so it you was. don't want to be biased. <laughs> it was also, in hindsight, a very bad idea. <laughs> no, but I, I do think there's arguments against it. Third place goes to Jacob. Oh. Again, I mean, I, I I really do like the idea of alpinism, but... I know. The idea of, like, rewarding something that happened outside the Olympics with a gold medal, like, it, it's kind of like giving a Nobel Prize, but I don't know. I, I mean, guess I wasn't sold on it. The majority of the work always happens outside of the Olympics. Dang That's it, I should true. have said that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to the main two. So I'll say the winner first, but then I'll explain why the person who got second got second. So between our two guests, actually, the winner is going to be Chris. Whoa. Oh my gosh, I broke uh. my second place streak. Nice. And I'm not even on the board. Come on, Joe. <laughs> so you're on the board. Yeah, you yeah, beat me, you got Connor. You got second. <laughs> well, the overall hostile discourse board. That's true. Oh, uh, that's true. But many people aren't. I'll be back. <laughs> uh, no, I I really did like your argument, but the drawback I had was that you were arguing that Nordic is two different events and they'd be better separate. But your idea for the cross country skiing is kind of the same where like you would cross country ski up and then ski back down, which no, are already back country skiing. It's not cross country. Well, skiing. okay. That's fair. I did like the idea, but I don't know. I guess to me, it was kind of like replacing something with something very similar. Um, so if I kept it as simply back country skiing down an uncharted terrain without a possibly, help. possibly <laughs> with the helicopter Damn. drop. Yeah. But honestly, no, Joe already made up his mind. Stop. Yeah, the thing I didn't hear too much complaint about was the pond skimming. Um, yeah. And honestly, it would be quite implementable as a event and definitely it would have the entertainment factor. I mean, Jacob yourself said it would make some beautiful <laughs> cut shots. I, I'm, I'm sold on this idea. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> it sounds pretty legit. And I mean, David and Bob, Chris both kind of brought up how bobsled and skeleton are just repeats of the luge. Um, so anyway, Chris wins. I apologize if I've offended, but... 
Well, how dare Such you? Such is how it is. I'm honored. Thank you. Uh, thank you for judging, Joe. And congratulations, Chris. Thank you. It's been a long drought. I just... Chris, were you Paige in the chat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I thought that was actually Paige. That's so funny. What was she saying? Oh, man. I said it's not Paige up at the... A little earlier. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle is saying, man, that was really confusing. Now that I know that, okay. Because <laughs> Chris said, hi, Kyle, do you like frogs? <laughs> Kyle said, no. Chris said, why? <laughs> Kyle said, ribbit. <laughs> That's like... It's, it's, uh, it's a, these are the, are long these are the kinds of conversations you can look forward to when you join the live chat on YouTube, everybody. All right, well... Congrats again, Chris, and thank you for coming on, Connor. Thanks for having me. So we will be back in two weeks, like always. The Winter Olympics will be done by then. I hope you guys can enjoy them a little more after this discussion. Be sure to leave us a review on iTunes. That would really help out the show if you enjoyed this episode. And also, follow us on social media. And we love when you interact and comment on our posts and give us ideas for debates. And we'll give you a shout-out. Or even maybe have you on the show if you give us a debate idea that we that we would use. So, yeah, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. So, thanks for watching. We appreciate you listeners and viewers. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Hostile Discourse. Subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And check out our other social media accounts linked in the show notes. Join us next time for more inexhaustible debate over the most questionable of topics.